I have many hobbies, like art, swimming, and killing ponies. I kill because it's just so much fun. It's hard to explain to ponies who never tried it. Killing is like ending the pain a pony may go through, you know? So, after I finish bullying my victims, I kill them to rid them of their troubles. Diary of a Bully Entry 1 Hello, my name is Diamond TR. I like to make dolls. I have a big closet of dolls. They're all great, and I love playing with them. At first, I sold some dolls and made some bits. But ponies stopped buying them after I began to bully. I guess they were trying to teach me a lesson, but I guess you can say I never learned. <laughs> I don't know why I began to bully. One day, I saw a blank flank, and at the time, I was one too. But her hair was so ugly. She had long orange hair, but she put it up in a big knotted bun. I told her her hair was ugly. For some reason, I couldn't shut up. I, I went on and on about how ugly she was. The filly ran away and I snuck out of the park. <laughs> on my way out, I stepped on a snail. It was good. <laughs> It was gloopy and nasty. <laughs> but the sound of cracking was joyful. I found some more snails and stepped on them. Some teams came over to the area where I was, so I left. I went back home and finished my homework. But a while later, like months later me and my mom was making lunch together i had to cut some fruit and she came to help me but ended up getting cut by the blade i was holding i said i was sorry but inside i had never felt something like that <laughs> it was weird i felt happy and disgusted. I didn't know what to do next. So I told my mom good night and went to my bedroom, even though it was midday. I thought about what I just did. I almost killed my mom. And I liked it. <laughs> that was the day. I decided to take my bullying to a new level. Maybe I could start killing ponies, I thought. Nah, I'm a good filly. Fillies don't kill. Fillies make dolls and behave. But I am no good filly. <laughs> The first pony I killed was a colt named Round Marble. I was so young, so I gave him a clean death. I poisoned a cupcake that another filly made. <laughs> he ate the rotten cupcake and died. <laughs> I'm so cleverful. And the young filly who made the cupcake got sent to the prison for young fools. <laughs> so far, I only killed two times, with the exception of round marble. I want to kill more, so 
maybe in the future. But the two ponies I killed, I killed together. <laughs> While I was a blank flank, I had some bullies of my own. I respected their work, but no pony steps on me. I let them chase me, and I went to an old warehouse on the outskirts of town. It was so dumb. It was so dumb that they followed me to an abandoned warehouse. <laughs> it shut down years ago because of pollution. Anyhow, when they got there, I knocked them out with a baseball bat I left there before. I plan out my murders with great care. <laughs> As they were knocked out, I tied them down to chairs and had those chairs facing each other. First, I played with Crimson Day. She just followed in what the other filly did. Anything she did, Crimson did. She loved the soft color of her hair. So, I made it dirty with mud and vomit. I got the vomit in the trash can by the Thunder Flash roller coaster. After that, I had to put on rubber gloves. So, I wouldn't get dirty. After that, I grabbed a razor and began to cut her hair. After, I cleaned her head of hair. I began cutting her scalp and the tips of her ears. After that, I wrapped a rope around her neck and tightened it. The thing about Crimson is she had very little self confidence. So she starves herself regularly. So as soon as I tightened the rope as tight as it could go, I broke her neck. <laughs> Holy shit. It honestly surprised me. <laughs> I better keep a note of that. I gasped and said, oh, did Crimson break her neck? <laughs> Should've ate more! <laughs> I then moved to Melancholy, the leader of the two. I grabbed a knife and cut open her stomach, careful to avoid any gross guts. I found her stomach and opened it up. I let the stomach and her lunch slowly spill out. After that, I put some thumbtacks inside and lemon juice. <laughs> she squealed in pain and I told her to shut up. Melon didn't listen and continued to whine. I told her to shut up or I'll punish her for it. Melon didn't care and screamed loudly. I sighed and grabbed her tongue and pulled hard at it. I used the knife I had and cut it off in a swinging motion. I held it in front of her face and she gagged. <laughs> I walked over to my table of tools and took a plier. Melon had clean white teeth and a kind smile. So I used the plier to pull out a good amount of her teeth. <laughs> Melon moaned and groaned and still carried on. <sighs> I got so fed up that I shoved my hoof so far down her throat. Sorry, my mom came into my room. Hold on. Back to where I was. I shoved my hoof down her throat, causing her to throw up. Ugh. 
I gagged and pulled my hoof out of her throat. <laughs> that shut her up good. <laughs> I grabbed the baseball bat and broke her nose with it. <laughs> when I was bored and proud of my work, I took a hacksaw and cut up their body parts. I put the body parts in a cart and buried it in front of the factory. I cleaned myself off in the bathroom and went back home. Today it was Scootaloo's birthday and we all had to pitch in and give her a gift. I wanted to give her a good smack in the face, <laughs> but instead, I made a doll for her. She thanked me, and I said it was no problem. <laughs> I can't wait to kill Scootaloo. I have decided I'll pick the Beauty Mac Crusaders off one by one, and Scootaloo will be first. I relate to her most, since she had some spunk to her, but doesn't show it. Sometimes, I do stuff to bother her. Not teasing, but like abuse. Sometimes I preen her wings, or put her things high up. Hmm, I don't know what to write now. I guess that's it. My diary. Toodles. Entry 2. Author's note. I don't know why some of my text goes bold for some reason. <laughs> <clears throat> Ugh. I hate summer. It's so hot. At least school ended. Which means I have more time to kill and abuse ponies, I guess. I don't mean to sound cruel when I say I love to kill. So far this so far this summer, I killed one pony. Her name was Summer Breeze. Ironic she died in the summer. I wish I had magic. That way, I could do much more things to kill ponies. <sighs> oh well. I took Summer into the Everfree Forest. <laughs> At first, I didn't know what I would use, but she pointed out a small lake. I took a knife from my saddlebag and jumped onto her back. I used the knife to cut off her wings. <laughs> she was screaming so loud! But we were far inside the forest, so no pony could hear us. <laughs> Once I broke her wings enough, I leaned forward and pushed her head into the lake. Summer began to struggle for a while but fell limp. I sighed from our slight struggle, but uh, I'm starting karate so I can get tougher. I'm practicing so one day I might kill my parents. But now I'm nowhere near strong. I dragged her body into an acid lake we ran into before. I dropped the knife into the acid lake too and washed off in the water. I exited the forest and went into town. No pony paid attention to me. Just another filly walking through town. <laughs> I went into Sugar Cube Corner and bought some caramel corn. I slowly munched on it and walked through town. I saw a group of children gather around something or some pony. I pushed past to see a new filly I'd never seen before. 
Her fur was a bright orange, and her mane was a slight darker orange, and her cutie mark was a red hula hoop. The filly was hula hooping with three hoops, and all the children were cheering her on. I admit, I do get very jealous, but my jealousy drives me on to kill, and without motivation, you're really not doing anything fun. I stood closer to the filly, making her stop hula hooping. Yes? The filly sounded like Sweetie Drops and Octavia Melody mashed together. Hmm, what's your name? I asked. Oh, it's a Tangerine Hoops. The filly started and picked up her hoops, beginning to trot away as the crowd broke up. My mom and I live over by Appaloosa, and we came here for a and we came here for the Apple family reunion. Hmm, you're not an apple, I reminded her, and kept pace with her. Uh, uh, yeah, but my mom is married to Candy Apple. Tangerine explained. I gasped. Candy Apple is a mare. Your mom is a lesbian? Uh, 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 yeah? I started laughing, which made her flinch. What? Being gay is not funny. You mean... The filly said, running off. I waited her to leave earshot and began to snicker again. <laughs> I just found my newest victim. I went back home and pulled out a small magenta notebook. In the book, was the names of every foal in Ponyville. I flipped to the next free slot and wrote in Tangerine Hoops. I then flipped to the front and looked through the foals I already killed. Red Axe, Rainbow Sky, Blue Wave, Snowflake, Soda Daisy, Round Marble, Crimson Day, Melancholy, and Summer Breeze. <laughs> Next, I have to kill Midnight Tea. <laughs> I had Yo Hey Yogurt and Oats for dinner and went to bed. Each foal had five stripes. Each foal had five stripes. The four strikes is when I bully them, and the fifth strike is when I kill them. Midnight T is on his fourth strike, so the next I had to find him and kill him. Before I left, I grabbed my saddlebag and got some supplies. My parents were my parents were at work, but I still had to be careful that my nanny didn't see me. I snuck into the kitchen and looked through the drawers. I found the normal knife and scalpel. I wrapped them in paper so they wouldn't cut through my bag. I then went in to the shed and found a hammer and hacksaw. Since Midnight Tea was a unicorn, 
this would be useful, I thought. I went into the town with my saddlebag and went to town hall. On the walls were tons of missing pony posters. I went to the front desk and there was Dusk Coffee and his son, Midnight Tea. Hey T, wanna head to Sugar Cube Corner? I asked. Huh? No! No way! Not with you! He said. Oh please! They just added some more crystal berries! I lied. Ooh. Crystal berries was his favorite. R really? Yeah! And isn't it boring here? Let's go! I stated. Uh, Alright. Midnight added and exited the front desk. When we left, I spoke. You're an idiot, I said. You know that, right? Midnight sighed. Oh. Well, I know. I'm an idiot for trusting you. You know, you're, you're really mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, my parents are always at work and I never really had friends. I lied. Uh, well... That's alright, Midnight said, giving me a rub on my back. Hey, wanna come to my secret hideout? I smiled evilly. Sure! <laughs> he led me into a treehouse, past Sweet Apple Acres, and by that time, it was midday, so when I finished killing him, it would be evening. I had to be quick. Here it is! Midnight opened the door, and inside was a bare room with nothing but some books, bags of candy, and pillows. Oh, not even my parents know about this place. I smiled, thinking I can leave the body here and no pony would find it. Damn it, there's no chairs. Oh, uh, hey, do you have any chairs? Uh, <laughs> chairs? No, sorry. Midnight laughed and sifted through the pile of books. This would be the most challenging kill ever in the history of kills. I grabbed a heavy book from the pile, so heavy that I could barely hold, and smacked him, smacked him in the head with it as hard as I could. He stumbled a bit before passing out. I grabbed the hacksaw from my bag and sawed off his horn. I looked around and had a strike of creativity. I piled the books to make a chair and used the tassel from the curtains to tie him down. I sat in the corner and read a daring do book until he woke up. <laughs> huh? Huh? Diamond Tiara? Uh, help! Help! I'm stuck! Midnight said. Nah. You see, I like to kill ponies. You should know. Haven't you seen the missing posters in Town Hall? Midnight ignored me 
and continued to struggle. I took the hacksaw and cut his hooves off. Once I reached the bone, I had some trouble cutting through. So, I used a book and hit the book against his bone and it eventually broke. Midnight cried out in pain, but I grabbed a knife and pressed the tip and the corner of his mouth. Smile! I told him and drew a big smile with the knife. <laughs> At this point, Midnight was crying and praying to Celestia to save him. I took the knife and cut a circle around his eyes and then dug the blade underneath, his eye popping out, and I cut the string that held it in. I punched him across the face and sliced his chin. <laughs> Too bad you're gonna die a blank flank. <sighs> I said and made small cuts across his face. I then looked for some sour chews and placed it inside the cuts. I grabbed a hammer and smashed it against his forehead. His skull cracked and he bled out. I frowned at all of the blood on me. I exited the treehouse and went into town. I looked at the first house and I saw a filly in my class inside. <laughs> I knocked on the door and she answered. Get out of there! Is your parents home? I asked. Oh, no, come in. What happened to you? The filly was silver with a light, dull, baby blue mane. I'm Silver Spoon. Wait, that's Silver Spoon? No, come in. What happened to you? The filly was silver with a dull, baby blue mane. I'm Silver Spoon. <laughs> I entered and went for her bathroom. I turned on the bath and got inside. I scrubbed the blood off and put some band-aids on in random places. I wanted her to think I did get hurt and not the other way around. I exited, and she had a cup of cocoa for me. The, wow, thank you, I stated. We talked for a while, and I went back home. At my home, my mom asked me where I was. Oh, I was playing with midnight tea, I said, and went to eat dinner. We had pasta and salad. I brushed my teeth and went to bed. I had a dream that I was with that silver spoon filly and she was helping me bully the cutie mark crusaders. Well, that's it for now. I can't wait to kill that tangerine hoops. In fact, I might skip the whole five strikes thing too. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Entry 3 Author's Note I checked it all once, so if you notice a few mistakes, then that's why. I just wanted to make this short story since I really like this idea, even though not a lot of people like it. I haven't written in forever, but I just haven't felt like killing. There is a horrible thunderstorm going on outside, so school is cancelled. I have nothing else to do, so 
I'm just taking a nap. It had been hours and the storm has finally stopped. So, I went outside. Pegasi were clearing the sky. I decided to stay inside. I didn't have much inspiration to do anything. Then, I saw a soft pink filly with hot pink hair came past the mansion. And I just had to kill her. <laughs> Sounds weird out loud, but I followed her. Whoa, whoa, what are you doing? The filly asked, turning around. Hey, want to play with me? I asked her. Ooh, no way! You keep bullying me because I don't have a cutie mark. Play with me this once and I'll stop, I swear. Well, all right, the filly said. What do you want to do? Hey, let's visit Zakora. Who's Zakora? Is that Zebra? I nodded. She's nice. Oh, I'm scared. Don't worry. You'll be dead. Candy. Oh, okay. We went into the forest. After a while of walking, I grabbed a rock and bashed her head in. She collapsed and screamed. I shoved the rock into her mouth. Killing you. I removed it for her to speak. You, you said you wouldn't bully me. Technically, I'm not bullying you. I began to ram the rock in her mouth. When I had my fun, I ended her. I sighed, washed me and the rock off, and pressed on. I had found Zakora's house and entered. <laughs> Hi, Cora. Oh, oh, hi, little Willy. The name is rather silly. What do you need help with? <laughs> Zakora asked. Just came for a visit, I said. Alrighty, I want to hear a tale of the Almighty. <laughs> Zakora said. I was confused by who the Almighty was. Is he like a god? I asked. Zakora nodded and began the story. After the story, I went into the kitchen. What was the story? <laughs> she was cooking baked apples and squash. I took the knife and helped cut some apples. When she wasn't looking, I stabbed her in the spine. Oh, Zikora screamed, and she died moments later. <laughs> now her house is mine. I redecorated it and added a lock to the door. Now I have an operating room. I changed the wood with marble stone, which is plain tan. The walls are pure white, and I have some cute lamps. I also had a bookshelf, a bed, and a left to the kitchen alone. My first victim there was... Sweetie Belle. No! 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 Sweetie Belle! No! I sawed off her horn.
Diamond began. Da da Diamond Tiara! You're a murderer! Thanks, Sherlock, I sneered. What part of the body do you value the most? My horn, but you already saw that off! Your eye it is! <laughs> I giggled. I took a knife and made a circle around her eye. Then I pulled it out. I cut the little fleshy string holding it in place. She screamed, begging Celestia to save her. Then I drew a music note on her blank flag. Sing for me. No! I stabbed her on the flank. Then she began to sing Smile. <laughs> it was pretty good. I took a lemon and sliced it in half. I prepared a lemonade without sugar. I sipped some and it was super sour. Next, I took a dropper and dropped some into the wound on her flank. I took some hydrogen peroxide. I had to check my bathroom since I didn't know how to spell it and poured it out, poured it on the same cut. Her flesh turned white and it was scary. Yuck! I said, recutting the wound. Anyway, I have to go home now for dinner. See you later. I half expected her to die of blood loss, and she did. I was so mad that I couldn't play with her more. Anyway, Apple Bloom and Skooloo looked really upset. I lied and said that she went to Lost Pegasus. They went there, and so far, they haven't come back. Sorry this entry is so short. I just have to get back to killing. Bye! Entry 4 Author's Note I'm canceling this story, not because I hate it and this idea is going in the trash, but because I wanted to adapt it into third person. I felt that if you focus on one person, then you might miss the bigger picture. Plus I lazy. I'm writing this while on a train. I'm heading to the Crystal Empire. Can you believe me? I'm so excited! I always wanted to be a princess. And now I can! We're here! The hotel is amazing. And we got to meet Princess Flurryheart. She's so cute. I'm already plotting to kill her. Poison wouldn't be so satisfying, but it's easier. Anyway, today we went to a bowling alley. I met this girl named Turquoise Ball. We talked for a while, and then we went to the restaurant. The food was good, and I'm going to have to bring home some crystal berries and crystal corn. I also got a free flugelhorn. Hey, there was a crystal flugelhorn. Then, after that, we went to see a light show. It was very pretty, but I fell asleep near the end. I killed turquoise today. We went ice skating, and when No Pony was looking, I pushed her off the cliff. <laughs> I said that she must have tripped and fell. All I had to do was fake cry, and I got off scot-free. There's a large fence around the ice now. It's a sight 
for sore eyes. <laughs> After that, me and my mom had the bestest hot chocolate in the world, imported all the way from Yak Yakistan. Ooh! It was nice, but I have a job to do. I have the poison. It's compromised of rotten berries, poisonous berries, and ground up apple seeds. I put them in some cookies, and luckily, there's a batch of cookies being delivered. We're gonna to a dinner with the royal family, and the cookies are for dessert. I guess every pony would eat the cookies, but it would only be fatal in babies. Woo! I have a pretty blue dress that I'm gonna wear, and I can't wait! So what I did was I set up a lemonade stand in front of the train station. Then the delivery pony came and took some of my lemonade. I chatted with him. This was well after rush hour, and after drinking it, he had to pee. So he left the cookies with me. <laughs> That's when I switched the cookies with the real ones. <laughs> he said, oh, good day, miss, and then left. <laughs> I had made a bit of money from the lemonade, which was another win. <laughs> We're on the train again, this time going to Canterlot for Flurry Heart's funeral. Here's what happened. We went to the we went to dinner and the dinner was so delicious. I ate three plates of roasted veggies and baked potatoes. Then the dessert, I took my parents' cookies so they didn't have to eat it. Then the others ate up. <laughs> mm, oh. Yes, what a cookie! Huh? What a cookie? Cadence cooed and fed Flurry Heart a second cookie. Then it happened. Flurry Heart began to choke and bursts of energy shot from her horn. And then she collapsed. Prince Shining ran over, checking her pulse. <laughs> Please, she, she's gone. Princess Cadence's eyes widened and began to sob. Guards, get her to the hospital! <laughs> <laughs> the next day, we got word that she died from poison. They couldn't tell from what because of all the other stuff she ate. But for now, the suspects are all the chefs and maids, Sir Sunburst and the delivery pony. Now it's nighttime and we're headed to Canterlot. There I can kill other ponies. I feel that my cutie mark means that I'm a natural born leader. I got it after leading my class through the museum after we lost our teacher, Miss Sunny, I wear a tiara because I'm a princess. That's why I can get foals to listen to me even after I bully them half to death. I'm so tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna write about what happens at Canterlot. My dad decided to go back home to Ponyville. He already lost some of his business because of Flurry Heart's death, but we left after the grand funeral. I only cared about the food since I killed Flurry Heart. <laughs> Another thing is that I finally got around to killing Tangerine Hoops. Hey, clap and a half. Sorry. She was fun and lasted a long time. We were in the forest as usual, but we were in a whole new area. I got lost trying to find a lake to wash off in. Anyway, I wanted to do something new and exciting. 
I was able to overpower her, and I got on top of her. Oh, please stop! This isn't funny! Meh! I'm not trying to be funny. Just wait until we get home. Ooh! Oh! Uh oh! She began to struggle as I slowly pricked her neck with a syringe, and she passed out. I dragged her out into a campsite that I had set up early. I strapped her down inside a tent and placed a gag around her. She woke up and began to struggle. I stepped forward with a kitchen knife in my hook. I sliced her stomach open. Today, I wanted to play with her organs. Let's call her Hoop. Hoop began to swear and curse me out. I laughed since I couldn't understand her. I pulled out the first organ I could find. It was slimy. I laughed and played with it for a while, tossing it in the air and just, you know, analyzing it. I placed it on her forehead and it slid down. <laughs> I ripped her gag off and put the organ inside. Ew! Ew! Yuck! Yuck! Then I closed the gag around her mouth and the organ. Ew! I dug around in her chest cavity and found her large intestine. I pulled it out and slung it around my neck. Aw, oh, it's a shame we don't learn about organs until high school. But I can teach myself. I call this Mr. Snake. I joked. <laughs> I could barely hear her say, Fuck you! <laughs> I gasped at such language. How dare you! Do you speak to your mother with that mouth? I bet she's off kissing another mare! Gross! <laughs> Hope struggled again as I dug around in her stomach again. My hooves tainted in blood. I ripped out a strange organ. It was like an oval, and I couldn't get it without cutting open her rib cage. Is that her heart? I guess it was her lung? Uh, okay, this is, or not, sorry. This is your lung. My mom told me you need it to breathe, but my nanny said that you could survive with only one lung if you keep it healthy and don't smoke or eat fatty stuff. Hoops whimpered and accepted her fate. I sighed and slapped her across the face. You don't get to give up. I say when it's over, but fine, you were nice and actually talked to me. So, I'll make the torture worse. <laughs> I began to rip all her organs out and tossed them into a bucket of acid that I got from the lake. When I was done, I began to let loose and stabbed her. I avoided any vital parts of the body so that she survived even after I was satisfied. <laughs> I ripped off the gag and Hoop spat out the organ. I slapped her again. I took a metal cup and scooped up some acid and splashed it on her face. I watched in amazement as her face melted away. I carefully put her brain in a plastic shopping bag and put it in front of Miss Mayor Mayor's house. I don't know what will happen. But I doubt she'll like my gift. <laughs> Entry 5. Final. Today, I was kidnapping Soft Fur, a cult I met while walking to a bowling alley, and I was dragging him through the forest. 
I guess I put too much sleeping powder in the cupcake I gave him. A anyway, I was going to take him to Zakora's hut, and then I saw Silver Spoon. She was apparently looking for Zakora and was waiting there. I hid Soft Fur's body in a bush. Uh, uh, hi, VT, Silver Spoon said. Have you seen Zakora? Uh, no idea. I bet she left Ponyville. Finally. Oh, uh, oh, Silver Spoon said. Why? I asked. Um, Apple Bloom got cutie pox, she said. Ha! Serves her right! <laughs> I laughed. Yeah, but no pony can find Zakora! <laughs> it's not deadly, but she might get a knife, cutie mark, and maybe kill us. I waved my hoof at her. Apple Bloom, a killer? <laughs> Anything's possible. In fact, you might be a killer, <laughs> and no pony would know. I laughed. <laughs> Me? I'd never kill. Just then, Soft Fur began to wake up. The bushes rustled, and Silver Spoon screamed. Some pony's stalking us! Soft stood up and groaned his eyes coming into focus. Uh, uh, she kidnapped me! She's a murderer! Silver Spoon looked at me. What? Soft Fur ran away, and I tackled him to the floor. What are you doing? Silver Spoon screamed. Help me, and I'll explain later! Silver Spoon thankfully rushed over and held Soft Fur still. Well, what are you going to do? Shh, I said as I placed my hoof against his throat. Silver Spoon gasped when Soft Fur fell limp. Me and her dragged him inside and strapped him down. You gotta kill him! Silver Spoon screamed. Yes, and every other foal that disappeared in Ponyville was killed by me, I added. And, but why? You have to understand, I love doing this. It's not like choosing your favorite flavor of ice cream. You can't choose if you like gore. You just do! That's why they have scary movies. Silver added. Please, kill Soft Fur, and then you'll understand, I said. Silver Spoon flinched when Soft Fur woke up. <sighs> what do I do? You can cut his wings off. I suggested, and Soft began to struggle again. Silver grabbed a sharp butcher knife and shakily cut along the base of his wings. It only cut down a few inches deep. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, I can't, I can't do it, Silver cried. Yes, you can. Just try really hard. Pretend he insulted you, I stated. Silver applied pressure to the knife until she heard a loud snap and the wing bone broke. She grabbed it and ripped it off. Soft fur screamed and begged, but Silver Spoon didn't give in. She laid both wings on a napkin to dry. Uh, can, can you help me? Silver Spoon asked. With, with what? Uh, anything. I looked in a box of supplies that I kept 
and found some fish hooks. And I ain't talking about the show. I brought some over to the nearby table. I put some string on the end so that it could hold it. Wanna play a game? I asked. Uh, what game? It was an old torture method used by King Samba. King Samba, woo! You put hooks in their lips and ask them questions. If they won't talk, or in this case, answer wrong, then you rip the hook out. Oh, please stop, please stop, sobbed Fur Bear and began to struggle. Silver Spoon punched him in the face and his tooth fell out. I gasped. Oh, okay, I'm actually liking this. Can I help you next time? Of course! I never thought that I'd have another pony torturing with me, let alone my best friend! Okay! Silver Spoon said. Who got their kitty white first? Snips or snails? I won't play your girl! Soft fur was cut off by a loud scream. He screamed when Silver ripped the hook out and giggled. You better answer. I cooed. Oh, oh, snips, snips, he said. I patted his head. Too late. How many times did I say silver today? I asked. Uh, I don't know, you retard. I ignored his comment and ripped the hook out. This went on for hours until we ran out of hooks. Let me go, please let me go, Soft said. Ah, <laughs> uh, no way. We've come too far. Your wings are gone. Your lips are messed up, Silver Spoon said. Please, please, I won't tell, I won't tell, Soft Fur begged. Um, I'm having so much fun, and when you die, I'll do it again. It won't be any fun if I let you go. Soft Fur sighed, beginning to sigh. <laughs> we should take a look at his organs. We can play around with them, and he won't die for a while, I explained. Oh, real organs, Silver said. Okay. I grabbed a knife and sliced open a line from his chest to his belly button. I pulled it open like a pair of double doors. Silver Spoon stuck a hook in and then licked it. Her eyes widened. Oh, have you ever ate this meat? She asked. Hmm, I never thought of tasting it. I sliced a piece of her cutie mark off, then cut another two pieces of meat off. I handed one to her, and I ate mine. The blood was salty. However, Silver Spoon stared at hers before licking the blood off. She popped it into her mouth and chewed. Mm, yum! Yum! She cheered. Oh, help me! Help me! Silver picked up a large and sharp butcher knife. Okay. She began stabbing Soft Fur's leg, blood splattering everywhere, on the floor, on us, on Soft Fur. She kept going long after he was dead. Oh, oh, uh, I'm done. I'm done. She gasped. 
silver spoon was crying. What? Well, why are you crying? I... I killed Simone. I can't. It's too late now. You'll get killed for torturing some pony if you're 12. And you are! You forced me to! Your hoof prints are on the knife, and I never said to start stabbing him. Uh, I was under pressure! Under pressure, my ass! You even said yourself that you were having fun or some shit like that. Don't curse me out, or I'll, I'll kill you! I have a bucket of water that I fill up every so often, I said, pointing to the bathroom. Uh, all right. But don't you want to do it again? No! Look, uh, okay. I don't know what happened next, but my mom called me for dinner. I have to go now. <laughs>